Let me hear a sound of joy in all homes because from today, your life will be used for the glory of God. Your children, your family will be for God's glory. Hallelujah. I welcome you once again to the new house on an online service. Amen. The Lord is doing great things and the beautiful thing about the online is that God is bringing the is spirit into our homes. I, I, I believe that you can feel the same spirit of God in your home right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Today we're speaking about recovery. Hallelujah. Many, many news about what is going on around. I'm, I have a word for you that your recovery has come. Amen. When you are blessed, you know, when I was listening to that Jesus message, it talks of blessing. No one that is blessed can remain down. Even though you be cast down, you will yet rise again. Hallelujah. Recovery has come. Say to yourself, my recovery. No matter what you have lost, my recovery, my restoration has come. I want to speak on just three things, three key points on steps to, reco to recovery. Hallelujah. Because whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, opportunity you have missed, I believe God that from this day going forward, there shall be rapid restoration, recovery of all that you have lost in the name of Jesus. And I pray for Nigeria as a nation, our season of recovery has started. I pray for everyone that is sick right now, on their sick bed or in their home. I decree recovery of health in the name of Jesus. For businesses that have lost resources, lost, lost, lost capital, lost, you know, I mean, lost for, for, for people that have lost their jobs. I decree in the name of Jesus, the anointing of God for speedy recovery locates you in the name of Jesus. So. The steps, number one, I pick the first step from Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the first key to recovery is seeking God first. Seek God first. In the midst of what is going on, let God be your focus. Amen. Let God be your focus. When God becomes your number one priority, you are in for speedy recovery. He says, seek him first, the kingdom. He's not disputing that there are other things that are battling for your time, but he's telling you to have a scale of preference. The first one is to seek God. Seek him. Seek him in prayer. Seek God in worship. Seek God in the word. Seek him. Get close to God. Spend time with him. The moment you begin to seek God, recovery has kicked in. He used the, there's a word here when he says, Seek him first the kingdom of God. And that says, and his righteousness. And his righteousness. In another translation of this same verse, this righteousness is well explained. And that is in Good News Bible Version. In Good News Bible Version. It says in Matthew 6, 33, Good News Bible Version, it says, Instead, instead, be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God. And with what it requires of you. And he will provide you with all these other things. In the, the, the meaning of righteousness is knowing what he requires of you. Amen. Many times we are, we are believing God for things. We want God to do some things and move in some areas. 
But God is saying when you seek him, you seek him in a dimension of getting to know what does God want me to do? What does God expect from me in this season? The step of recovery is knowing what God wants you to do next. He says in Matthew 6, 33, good news Bible. Instead, be concerned above every, uh, everything else with the, with the kingdom of God and with what he requires of you. What does God require of you? Seeking God, Lord, what will you have me do? What is my next step? What will you have me do? That is a prayer of inquiry. Seeking God for inquiry. Why? You need one thing. And that thing I call it the game changer. What you are looking for is an instruction from God. When you begin to seek God, don't just seek God for things. Seek him for instruction. Whenever God speaks, it puts an end to delay. It puts an end to drought. All you need for a change is an instruction from God. The moment God speaks, remember in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, the earth was without form and void. And then was upon the face of the deep. And what God said, the moment God gave an instruction, let there be light, boom, everything began to change. Everything started changing. I decree in your life, the required word for your change has come in the name of Jesus. I said the required word, the required word, what it takes to change your life completely, that word has come in Jesus' name. Bible spoke in Psalms concerning Joseph. It says, until his word came. Until his word came. When his word came, they loosed him. The chains were broken. The prison doors opened. Why? God spoke. I decree one more time. The word you have been looking for, the direction that you need, the instruction you need, is coming your way today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, what will, I, what will you have me do? I love that word. What he requires of you. What he requires of you. What God requires of you. The blessing you are believing God for. What will it take for me to access it? The door that I'm believing God to open for me. What will I have to do for the door to open? Hallelujah. That, that change of position, that promotion in your office, Lord, what will you have me do? God can say, go for a course. God can say, improve in this area. He can tell you, be more diligent. Be the best in, your, in whatever you are doing. He will give you an idea that will make you outstanding. One thing I know, if you don't give, things will not give in. If you don't move, things will not move. I decree, whatever that you need to do for your heavens to open, from today, they are activated in Jesus' name. They are activated in the name of Jesus. Let's look at 1 Samuel, verse 30. On the account of, of, of David, how David was seeking God for an instruction. I read from verse 1, first, first Samuel 30, verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire. The next thing, verse 6, it says, verse 6, same first Samuel 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people 
spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man for his son and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. They were, they were all in a mess. They were sorrowful, grieving. Others were using their anger, frustration to want to stone David. But David turned his pain into seeking God. He began to seek God. He began to what? Seek God. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He turned from his pain and he focused on God. Verse 7 now says, And David said to Abiathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abiata brought, brought the ephod to David. To understand this, at this time, this, he was the only surviving priest after Saul's onslaught on all the priests. And the ephod was, 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 was the sleeveless garment that the priest wear when it's time to worship God, when it's time to seek God, when it's time to enter into his throne and receive instructions on behalf of the people. So when David said, I need to hear from God. I need to seek my maker. I need, I need direct, I want to hear his voice. He said, Lord, bring me the garment of worship. So David went in and was inquiring of the Lord. At times like this, when you seek God, seek God in praise. Seek God in thanksgiving. Seek God in worship. Seek God from your heart. And as David was worshipping, seeking God, the next thing, he moved to the next phase. Number two, the steps. The steps of recovery. Number two is to hear the word. Hallelujah. To hear the word. To hear from God. To hear from God. So immediately he began to worship. Verse 8 says, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 8 says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. David understood the power of instruction. What will you have me do? That was his prayer. He was seeking God. He worshipped God. Why? He wanted to know, Lord, what will you have me do? He didn't just go to God and say, God, do something. God, recover my children. God, kill the Amalekites. Where are they? No. He didn't sit in one place waiting for God to move on his behalf. He said, Lord, what will you have me do for you to move? What will you have me do for my restoration? What will you have me do for a change of season? What will you have me do for a testimony? What do you expect from me? The moment as a Christian you begin to understand that God expects some things from us. What will you have me do? Shall I pursue? I don't know. Should I run after them? What should I do, Lord? I need a word from you. And he had a word. Clear instruction. And he answered him. Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. I decree over everyone that has lost anything precious. You, over, you will overtake them. You will recover all. Say, and surely overtake them and without fail recover all. I decree in your life in this season. Whatever you have lost, have you lost time? Have you lost opportunity? Have you lost businesses? Have you lost friends? Lost favor? I decree your restoration has come in the name of Jesus. It has come. Another man that experienced restoration, that recovered all just by an instruction, is a story of a man called Naaman. Naaman. He was, he, was, he, was, he was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. A great man. But the man was, was a leper. 
and he needed a miracle. But he traveled from Syria all the way from Syria to Israel. Why? He was believing God for restoration. When he, got, when he got to Israel to see a great man of God called Elisha, he went there for an anointing. He had heard that that man is powerful. That man, if that man prays for you. So he went there expecting prayers. If God can, if he can only pray for me, I will be well. He went there for the anointing to be laid upon him. Because he believed the man is anointed. If only he's anointed and touch me, then I will receive my miracle. But when he got there, Bible says in 2 Kings 5 verse 9, it says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, a great man, and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to the restoration, and thou shalt be clean. Something very instructive happened here. After he traveled all the way from Syria to Israel for a touch, for prayer, for anointing, the man of God did not come out to see Naaman. Elijah did not come out to see Naaman. Why? Why? The miracle of, El of Naaman was not in prayer. The miracle was not in anointing. The miracle of his life was hidden in an instruction. Just a word. Instruction. What will you have me do? So there was no need for Elijah to come out and lay hand and pray. Because he knew. If only you can receive this instruction. That which you traveled kilometers from. That which you traveled and you have been believing God for will be given unto you. And as, as Naaman obeyed, his story changed. I decree one more time. That thing that you have been looking for. That thing that you have traveled all far from. That thing that you have been looking, Lord, when will this happen? God will send you a word. It shall be your word of miracle. What will you do? The instruction was clear. Go into Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee. Thy flesh shall come again to thee. No wonder another man that understood the power of, of instruction for a recovery was the centurion man in Matthew 8, verse 7 to 8. The centurion man that met Jesus. And, and in verse 7, he says, And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Because he was, he went just for to a healing for his, his servant. Verse 8 says, And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worried that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word. Only and my servant shall be healed. I decree in the name of Jesus, the word for your miracle, the word for recovery of your health, the word for the recovery of your finances, the word for recovery of your marriage, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. In the word is an instruction. In the word. When the Amalekite invaded Ziglag, David didn't, didn't ask for the head of Amalekites. He didn't ask for rain to fall or fire to fall. All he wanted was, Lord, shall I pursue? I believe God, at this is a time God, that God is speaking the loudest, the most. That's why he wants all his children to be to, to cease from all their struggles that run up and down. I believe strongly that one of the reasons why God allowed this lockdown is that he wants to catch the attention of his children. That 
if only you can listen to me more, you will struggle the less. If only you can seek me for guidance, you will not toil for so long. Many times, maybe sometimes I'm going, to, I'm going out to go to office or I'm going maybe from island to mainland because I, I, I've made that, those trips so many times. So I enter my car and I just hit on going. I know I go to Milan Bridge. Suddenly I get to a particular place, I, feel, I, I enter huge traffic and I'm stuck there. Then one day I got to the office, I was complaining to someone. I, I was in traffic for one hour. The, the, I didn't know there, there was a breakdown, they were doing road repair. I was complaining. And I was, someone just asked me a question. Sir, don't you have GPS in your, in your phone? I said, yes, I have. I said, so why didn't you just, I mean, <laughs> I said, eh, but I know the way. He said, no, but just, I mean, simple inquiry of instruction. Why? The, the GPS knows where there is traffic and where there is no traffic. I said, but me too, I know the way. He said, yes, you know what to do. But don't undermine the power of instruction of the one that sees beyond what you can see. Amen? See, GPS, I call it God positioning system. God is far above us. His eyes can reach where your eyes cannot reach. He can move far in time than where you can't get to. So he knows what to do, what you should do, where to go, where not to go. He knows the shortest path. Everything that you are waiting, believing him for, he knows it already. So why can't you knock on his door in the morning? Say, my father, my father, what will you have me do today? But that's what the Bible says, if you will humble yourself and pray. See, most times when we know things, we are proud. But when you don't know, you are humble. Most times when I'm going to somewhere that I've not been before, I don't forget to, to go to, the, to check, to go on, online and use my GPS because I don't know. So I'm humble because I, I don't know the place. I'll quickly go and put the address on GPS. It will tell me direction. But when I feel that I know the place, now I, I know even the traffic, I can take it, take it, take it. I disregard. That's what happens to most of us. Yes, you have brain. Yes, you know. But there's someone that knows more than you. His name is called Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is called what? Jesus. Seek to hear from God. Lord, what will you have me do? And number three, I said the first step is seeking God. Number two is to hear His word. Number three is to obey the word. Hallelujah. Obedience. Obey. Obey. Let's not start obey. There is power in obedience. If God speaks to you, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 says, If ye be willing, if ye, that's the condition. He doesn't say, I'm, Is God speaking? I'm speaking. Now, if you will only if you are willing and obedient, that's what qualifies you for the blessing. Ye shall eat the good of the land. When you begin to get instructions from God and you begin to obey, there is good in the land. I'm telling you right now, if you don't know, that's a, 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 a hidden secret just for you. There's a blessing next to you. There's a miracle at your door. There's something beautiful coming your way, even this very week. There's a miracle moving to your, your direction. There's blessings. If only you will obey. 
when he speaks to you. I remember the story of Naaman that we read about. When he was told that go into the water of Jordan, he, he was angry. I traveled all the way from Syria to Israel. You just can't even honor me and show up. You didn't even talk to me. I, I'm going back. And they begged him. Sir, just obey. 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 I pray for every one of us from today. You begin to obey God. You begin to obey God. A scripture that I read, Hebrew 5, 7 to 8, says something about obedience. Hebrew 5, 7 to 8. It says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had suffered, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and with tears unto him, that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were, he were his son, yet lent he obedience by the things which he suffered. I discover sometimes that God allows us to go through some things for us to be obedient. He says, he le- he said, yet lent he obedience. He lent obedience by the things which he suffered. I, when, when David had cried, he had lost wife, lost children, he's, he had suffered very well. So he was humble when God says, do this. He didn't argue. But when everything is going on well and you know, things are working, and God speaks to you, say, no, don't worry about that. I, 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 I've got it handled. I've got it taken care of. I pray for you one more time. By the anointing of God, the anointing and the grace of obedience, the grace to obey the word of God, the obedience, that obedience, that when God speaks, your heart trembles in honor to obey. Let that spirit invade your home, invade your life, invade your children. In the name of Jesus. In that first Samuel again, 30 verse 9. I'll read downwards. First Samuel 30 verse 9. It says, So David went, and he and 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook of Bisa, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook. Level says, and they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. Verse 12, and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisin. And when they had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. Verse 13, and David said unto him, to whom belongest thou? And where are thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant of the Amalekites. And my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. 14 says, We made an invasion unto the south of Cherite and upon the coast which belonged to Judah, and upon the south Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. Sometimes you ask yourself in a, a million times will you have a possibility that is the same man that went with them to invade Ziglag, where was fell sick, was abandoned on the way, and as big as the desert was the one that they saw. See, when you obey God, God moves in the supernatural. Obedience is the key of the supernatural. Obedience opens the floodgate of God to move in his dimension. That's why most blessings are anchored on obedience. Oh, you're believing for financial, financial breakthrough. And he says, give and you shall be given. He says, seek time and harvest. There's always a condition for you to obey, to access the supernatural blessings of God. Oh, many things we want, if only you will only Walk in obedience. 
As he obeyed, supernatural activities began to happen. By the time we got to verse 18, the Bible says, and David recovered all. He recovered all that the Alamekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. He didn't lose a thing. I decree in the name of Jesus, as you begin to obey God, whatever you have lost, time, chance, opportunities, you will recover all in the name of Jesus. And I pray one more time, in any situation that you are going through, in whatever circumstance you are in, the power of restoration invades your life in the name of Jesus. The power to obey falls upon you. The grace to obey rests upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And as he obeyed, he met a destiny helper on the way. As he obeyed God, as he moved, God positioned help on his way. I pray for someone today, as you begin to obey God from today, God will position your helpers on your way. Even if it's very weak, in the name of Jesus. And I decree you will not miss, you will not miss God's visitation. In Jesus' name. And so shall it be. As I said, three steps. Seeking God. Seek God first. Seek Him in praise. Seek Him, seek him in worship. Two, hear his word. And three, obey his word. And as you walk in these three steps, you are in for complete restoration in the name of Jesus. I want you in your home, if you are with your children, your family, your loved one, or you are in the car, you are all, you are all alone. Just pray this short prayer. Say, Father, release upon me the grace to obey you. The grace to obey you. The grace to hear your word. The grace to receive instructions from you. The grace to obey the instruction in the name of Jesus. Fill my heart with the hunger to seek you more than ever before. In every area of my life, in the name of Jesus. The passion that I need, the, the hunger, the burning desire to please you, to worship you. Let it flood in my heart. Fill my home. Fill my home with the heart of seeking you. Seeking you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, in praise, in worship, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, wherever my helpers are, connect me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you pray that prayer, I want you just to shout a very big hallelujah. A very big hallelujah. And I want to speak to someone here that all you need for your change is obedience. God says, come unto me, those that are heavy laden. All you need is to cast your body on Jesus Christ. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants to, he wants, he, he wants to shower his blessing on, on your life. He wants to take over all that you're going through. He wants to be your helper. All you need to do is say, Lord, have mercy on me. If you have never been connected to Jesus Christ before, and you want to experience this restoration, recovery, you need to seek him first. Make God first in your life. Just say, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Just pray this short prayer. God, forgive me of my sins. From today, I make you first. Before now, I've made my career, my wants, my need, I've made them a priority over you. But Lord, I surrender all to you. I want you to be the first in my life. Forgive me of all my sins for rejecting you. Forgive me, Lord. I surrender. Come into my heart, Lord. Come and be my Lord. Come and be my Savior. In the name of Jesus. I believe your word that you are Jesus Christ, that you came, you died, and you rose again. 
You are Lord over my life. In the name of Jesus. All that I have lost, Lord, will restore back unto me. Give me a new beginning. In Jesus' name. And as you have prayed that prayer, I assure you that the Lord himself has heard you and has answered you in Jesus' name. Tell someone close to you that I commended my life to Jesus Christ today. From today, I'm a believer. And begin the, the path of righteousness in the name of Jesus.